Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. All right, folks, guess what? It's the end of the year holiday season. And with all the holidays, all the festivities comes those incredible foods that we love to think about, that we love to eat, and we love to talk about. From turkey and stuffing to sweet potato pie, the temptation to indulge is so real. Trust me, I know it. But if you're like many of us who are working hard to manage type 2 diabetes and stick to a healthier lifestyle, the holidays can be very tricky. It's a tough time. I know. I get it. Been there, done that. You may want to enjoy yourself and that's okay. But that's where you start worrying and you start getting frustrated. You're like, well, will this one meal throw off all my hard earned progress? I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to. You indulging and eating your favorite traditional foods doesn't have to ruin your entire progress. Well, in today's episode, we're going to talk about and explore how to enjoy holiday foods without feeling like you're ruining your progress. No guilt trips, just some realistic strategies you can start using right away. Listen, I don't believe that you have to quit your holiday fun, cold turkey, no pun intended, but you do want to consider making some adjustments while still having fun. So if you want to enjoy this holiday season while staying on track, stick around for some practical tips that will keep you feeling good for long and well after the plates have been cleared and well after the holidays so that you can go into the new year strong and feeling like you have the right momentum to keep going. So stick around to hear the rest of today's episode. You don't want to miss it. Let's go. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast, helping diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. I'm your host, Oscar Camejo. Hey, if this is your first time tuning in, thank you for tuning in. Or maybe you've been listening for a while and you're like, hey, Oscar, what's going on? What's new? Well, a lot is new. So I have a lot to share with you all in the near future. But for this episode, I want to welcome All of my first time listeners, thank you for tuning in. I have tons of resources on my website, uh, even a whole library of uh, topics on this uh, podcast. So be sure to check out my website at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. Follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook. There's a Facebook group there. There's also Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm all over the place. So just Google the beating diabetes lifestyle and you'll be able to find me. You know, let me tell you a little bit about my story, especially if this is your first time. I know firsthand what it's like to struggle with the weight and the effects it has on your health. I wasn't always in the shape I am today. In fact, I used to weigh 268 pounds from 2015 to roughly August 2020. I had gradually gained a lot of weight. In fact, in 2018, that's when I was first diagnosed with prediabetes. But I didn't take the advice I had gotten from my doctor serious enough to make changes. And so I just kept gaining weight. So by August 2020, I was officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in the hospital. And unfortunately, along with that diagnosis, I was prescribed with a whole bunch of medications from high blood pressure, cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes medication. I didn't want to be on medication, but I was like, you know what? I need to get my health on track. So I took my physician's advice and I'm glad I did. It helped me to stabilize my condition, but I knew in the back of my mind and in my heart that I wanted to eventually come off medication. So looking back, I realized that I could have prevented my health from declining. 
But at the time, it felt very overwhelming. Then something changed. I made a decision to take control of my health. So in less than a year, I lost over 80 pounds. I was able to get off all those medications and I was able to reverse type 2 diabetes. Today, folks, I am type 2 diabetes free. I'm off all medications and I feel great. I'm running marathons. I'm cycling. I'm hiking. I'm just enjoying life. I'm in, I'm enjoying exercising. I feel great and I look better than I have in years. And that's all because I made a decision to change. Well, I'm no different from you. You may be in a situation right now where you're struggling with your weight. You may be struggling with being on medication and you're just not feeling your best. Trust me, I've been there. I'm grateful every day for the opportunity to maintain a healthy lifestyle and to help others like you do the same. I know how challenging it can be, especially around the holidays. And that's why I'm here to share some practical strategies that can help you keep on track without feeling deprived. So let's dive in. This week's episode is all about enjoying holiday meals with confidence. That's right. It's okay to enjoy the holidays without ruining your health goals. Research has shown that people get very stressed out when it comes to their diet and the challenges that they are experiencing. In fact, a few years ago, a survey by the American Heart Association and the American Diabetes Association found that nearly half, that's roughly 49% of people with type 2 diabetes find managing their condition more difficult during the fall and winter holidays. That's real, folks. You see, the primary concern is staying on track with health goals during, you know, the time of festivities, you know, the temptations to just overindulge on the sweet potato pie and the, the mac and cheese and all the other stuff, you know, all the things. So basically, you're not alone. Probably half of the folks you know are struggling too. ask one of any one of your friends. They'll probably tell you, yeah, I know this. I know the struggle. It's real. That may explain why so many people choose very restrictive diets, but eventually fall off. You see, restrictive diets may work for a period of time and may work for some people. But for most people, especially around Thanksgiving or Christmas, it can feel a bit like you're punishing yourself. So, folks, stop punishing yourself. OK, but what if I told you? that it's possible to enjoy holiday foods without derailing, without completely throwing off your health. Where it's true, it's possible. So before we move on, I wanted to share with you, I have a free resource on my website. Be sure to go and check it out. It's a free weight loss planner. It's a powerful tool that can help you stay focused and motivated while you're on your weight loss journey. You know, by putting a plan in place and tracking your progress, you'll be able to see the positive changes that you're making, no matter how small or great. So go on my website at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com to download that free resource. So I want to give you four practical tips right now in this episode for guilt-free holiday eating. So number one, allow yourself some flexibility. Number two, be mindful of your portion sizes. Number three, prioritize the healthier options that you love. Number four, plan for after the holidays. Okay, let me break these down for you. Number one, allow yourself some flexibility. No one wants to spend the holiday season stressed out about every single thing you put on your plate. Allow yourself a bit of freedom. There's a dish that you've been looking forward to all year. I know. Go ahead, have a taste. But consider a smaller portion than you would normally eat. Don't pile on the sweet potato souffle. Come on. Half of your plate doesn't have to be sweet potato souffle. I know. It's good. But you don't want to overindulge. Remind yourself that one meal won't erase your progress. It's about the bigger picture. Practicing self-compassion goes a long way in reducing stress, which can help prevent overeating. So remember, allow yourself some flexibility. 
just don't go ham. <laughs> Number two, be mindful of your portion sizes. This kind of goes into uh, the first one, allowing yourself some flexibility. You see, it's easy to go overboard when everything smells and tastes so good. I can smell the roasted turkey now with the gravy, the stuffing. My favorite thing is stuffing. Hands down, I could eat a whole bunch of stuffing and enjoy myself. But portion size is so key. The goal is not to deprive yourself, but to enjoy a variety of flavors without feeling overly stuffed. And let me say this, stuffing is one of my favorite things during the Thanksgiving holiday. Man, I can eat some stuffing like you would not believe. But I realized that every holiday I would go back for three and four um, servings of the stuffing on top of all the other stuff that I'm eating. So I'm more mindful of what I do now. So I do sometimes get a smaller plate or even if I get the regular size plate, because maybe that's what's all there. I realize that I don't have to pile on a bunch of stuffing and other things on my plate to enjoy myself. So give yourself some permission to enjoy each bite. You might be surprised how satisfying it is. So don't deprive yourself. Just control your portion sizes. Number three. You want to prioritize the healthier options that you love. Try filling half of your plate with healthier options like green beans, roasted veggies, or even a salad. Leave some space for those favorite indulgences as well. So again, rather than fill your plate with all the stuff that you know you normally crave and are not so good for you, try prioritizing the healthier options. This can help you stay fuller longer and balance out the more carb heavy dishes. Now, if you eat a lot of dinner rolls during the holidays, three, four, five, six, hey, you may want to cut that down in half or just have one dinner roll. Again, having one dinner roll, maybe two, at least you've enjoyed it. You can say you had it, been there, done that, but you don't have to go overboard and just overeat. You don't have to stuff yourself. Also, see if there's a way to make healthier versions of your favorite foods. You know, sometimes a few tweaks like cooking with less salt, cooking with or baking with less sugar could make a big difference. So think about that. Uh, And number four, plan for after the holidays. You know, enjoying a holiday meal doesn't mean giving up on your health journey. One way to stay on track is to have a plan ready for when the celebrations wind down. You know, uh, this kind of reminds me of uh, there was a time where a friend of mine I named Gus. I always bring this up, you know, well, I bring this up every once in a while, but especially around the holidays. So Gus and I through, you know, he was a he's a good friend of mine, but we used to work at the same place and there was a gym on campus. So we would meet up during lunch and we were excited for for months and months going to the gym practically every day of the work week. Right. And um, we would just, you know, eat how we would normally eat, but go to the gym because we were focusing on, you know, bodybuilding, if you will. Right. And I remember wanting to look like me wanting to look like uh, Hugh Jackman when he played the Wolverine. You probably some of you who have uh, heard this story before indulge me for a moment. Um, so I wanted to look like the Wolverine. I wanted to be, you know, big and you know, ripped and all this stuff. So I was focus, focusing 100 percent on just building mass. Right. I wasn't even thinking about, you know, my diet and how I was eating and nothing. All I heard was just eat six times a day lift heavy weights and boom. So yeah, I built muscle. Gus and I, I mean, we we had built a lot of muscle and everything looked great. But then as the holidays came around, we we both went on vacation and I can tell you, you know, during that vacation time is where I fell off, right? I believe we both fell off. Gus said that he picked it back up. I don't know. I thought we both fell off, but 
I don't know. Go ask Gus. He has a different perspective on what happened. But the bottom line is I fell off and it took me years to build back up momentum. I mean, after the holidays, we would um, kind of meet up every once in a while, but just the momentum just crashed. It was over with. So my point is, I should have had a plan for what to do after the holidays to get on track. A lot of us, we wait till the new year to make a decision to, you know, turn things around because we know we just overindulge during the holidays. Right. But my thing is, it's better to plan ahead. So for right now, I think as you're going into the holiday, as you're making some adjustments to your health, already be thinking about the new year. Think about the momentum that you want to have and start building that momentum now. If you're not used to exercising now, if you're not used to eating healthy now, why wait till the first of the year? Why put it off? Why put off making healthier choices for the new year? No, the best thing to do is to plan ahead. And planning ahead involves making some small changes now so you go into the new year already having built some steam. Don't decide December 31st to work on your new year's resolution. Start working on your commitments now. So again, plan ahead, plan ahead. You're going to see a whole bunch of things on social media that come at your way, different ads for foods, different things that you can make for the holidays and just indulge yourself and just go crazy. I'm telling you, I wish that I had planned ahead for the new year. So again, look at the practical tips that I share with you today so that you can enjoy guilt-free holiday eating. But keep in mind the end result. Keep the end in mind. The end result is better health, right? The end result is developing a healthy lifestyle that is sustainable. The goal is not to get on a diet. Trust me, diets, especially these fad diets, they come and go. Folks, trust me. I was able to lose over 80 pounds doing exactly what I'm telling you to do. I'm not telling you to quit anything cold turkey. There may be some things that you can just quit right away that you know, hey, I can do without. Like, let's say if you're you, if during Thanksgiving dinner, you're used to the cranberry sauce and you're like, you know what? That's full of sugar. I'm not going to uh, have that. I can do away with that. OK, fine. You know, let's say you decide, hey, you know, I'm not going to have any sweets during um, the Thanksgiving dinner um, this year at all. That may be a decision that you can make and that may be easy for you, but there may be other things that are tougher for you to give up, like the high carb portions of your meals, like the, the, the stuffing, as I mentioned earlier. That may be something tough. Like for me, I know with uh, stuffing that I love stuffing. Why deprive myself of it? But I also know portion sizes are very important. So hopefully you get what I'm saying. So think about a few realistic goals for the new year, whether it's adding a couple of workout days or trying new balanced recipes, go for it. The goal is to make it enjoyable and sustainable. Building a healthy lifestyle isn't about one holiday season. It's about consistency and having consistent outputs every day over time. You know, Rome wasn't built in the day. So the lifestyle that you're trying to build is not going to be ruined in a day and is not going to be built in a day. So it's up to you folks. As you gather around the table with your loved ones this season, remember that food is a part of the joy. Food is not the enemy. You don't have to vilify sugar. You don't have to vilify salt. You don't have to vilify the sweet potato pies and the stuffing and the turkey and the fried turkey and all this other stuff. You know, just remember, enjoy the traditions, savor the flavors, 
and know that you're still in control of your health journey. Folks, I have over 110 episodes in my library and I cover a range of specific topics around weight loss, the best and worst diet, stress management, dealing with food cravings, how to kick sugar cravings, reading nutrition, food labels, so much more. I try to be very practical and hopefully you can relate to the content that I share. If you want to get more in depth on the topic of health, check out my library of episodes, whether you're listening on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, you name it. I'm all over the place. So thank you for listening to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast. It's been a pleasure helping you to get to the next level of your health. If you found today's tips helpful, be sure to share this episode with someone that you love, who you know could use a bit of holiday encouragement. Remember, you've got this. And as always, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can, my friend. And above all else, trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.